When playing Terraria, have you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish this game was cooler and more awesome and degraded me at every step of the way? Well look no further because I introduce to you the mod of redemption. This super sick mod adds loads of weapons and enemies and this guy. There are structures to see, bosses to defeat, maidens to fall head over heels for, and much much more. Welcome to the mod of redemption. The first thing I did after getting wood obviously was I checked out the boss list to see what I would be up against and the only thing that really worries me is the amount of prototype bosses there are because if the prototypes get to be that difficult I never want to meet the final creation. I began exploring to the right and ran into a group of these pokey little thorn bushes that gave me a heart of thorns when I mined it and it turned out to be the first boss summon. I ended up running into a crimson biome right away and after dying I explored a bit to the left and found a cave to start mining. I stayed in that cave for quite a while and got a couple chests, some life crystals, and lots and lots of ore. After running into a dead end, I decided to come back up to the surface and start making my house. Once I had established the base of it, I made full golden armor and a golden broadsword to go with it using all the ore I found. I then spent some time finishing my house, making a bit of NPC housing, and contemplating on what I should do next. After a bit of thinking, I decided that I should just keep exploring the surface to maybe find some cool structures in this mod and what do you know, I ended up finding this sick ass portal to the left of my house and some guy just fell right out of it. So this random dude comes stumbling out of some random portal and tells me that I have to prepare housing for him for when he returns. Ne needless to say, me and this guy were on bad terms. I, I did not like this guy. When he jumped back into the portal, he did give me something called chalice fragments and it says that holding this item will point to an ancient structure so I obviously followed it. Some mining and a couple of life crystals later, I had arrived at a very ancient looking structure. I, I mean just, just look at this place, it's got cobwebs, overgrown statues, broken blocks, it's got the works but under everything was some sort of glowing eye, so I obviously picked it up. It was a cursed gem that I was able to combine with the chalice fragments and make the chalice of alignment, and as soon as I crafted it, some crazy shit happened. After learning that what I do can affect the world around me in both positive and negative ways, I finished robbing the shrine or whatever it was and went home to prepare housing for the stupid ass portal guy. From the shrine thing I got a handful of grave steel alloys and these allowed me to craft some basic early gear. I also got this thing called an empty crux card, it's a container for friendly spirits to aid me, what, whatever that means. In the morning I decided to go back to the portal to investigate but the only thing waiting for me there was the stupid ass portal guy. He didn't say much other than how he's gonna crash at my place and pay no rent like some sort of freeloader, but it, it's fine, it's whatever, because he sold me this weapon called the Cantrip Staff, and it's a magic weapon that casts a ball of ember. I tested it out, and it was pretty shitty to be honest, probably like the rest of all of his wares that he's selling. Afterwards, I asked him for some advice, and he rambled on and on and on about all sorts of random stuff, but one thing did catch my eye. He said he felt a strange presence coming from beneath the portal, so I went to investigate and found a strange looking coffin under it. I broke into the coffin and out came a man by the name of Noob. I figured he had been dropped once or twice as a baby or something, not, not because he talks a little funny, but because he sells dirt. 
After losing a couple of brain cells talking to Noob, I went back up to the portal and noticed something weird on the table to its left. I grabbed it and got some sort of scroll labeled Forbidden Ritual that made draw unwanted attention. So I went home to use it and it summoned a boss named the Pale Bat Imp, which was then brutally murdered right in front of my eyes by the Anglonic High Priest Urhan. He started calling me stupid and shit for trying to summon a demon and then murdered me as well. Afterwards, despite only having 200 health, I figured I was ready to fight the Eye of Cthulhu, so I made an arena, summoned it, and honestly, surprisingly killed it with ease. With the Eye of Cthulhu out of the way, I moved on to the next boss, Thorn, Bane of the Forest, and with only 200 health, this was no easy fight. Once the thorn had been plucked, I got a circlet of brambles. It allows every fifth use of a magic weapon to also shoot a spread of stingers. I also got the root tendril, a summoner whip that has a chance to drop a defense increasing nature boon upon hitting enemies inflicted with a non-fire debuff, and since I didn't even know what a nature boon was, I barely used it. Afterwards, I decided to add more NPC housing and finally start the elevator. While making the elevator, I found a couple of ruins of what used to be someone's home, I assume, so I did the right thing and robbed everything I had. I got more Gravesteel Alloys and a new form of currency called the Antique Doral. Once I was back home, I used the Gravesteel Alloys to make the Noble's Halberd, a melee weapon that does much more damage than my previous one. Once it was made, my house got raided by a bunch of skeletons that wanted to have a party, so I got the perfect opportunity to try this weapon out. After crushing many skulls and breaking many bones, I made magic storage. I then continued the elevator for a long time, and I got a bunch of life crystals while I was down there, and I also came into contact with a spirit. Like, like with an actual spirit. I didn't even think they existed, but I, I guess they do now. I headed back to the surface and attempted the next boss, the Keeper, but this boss was much harder, so I lost. After that embarrassing fail, I took a step backwards and sinned right before the Anglonic High Priest himself.
I showed that priest no mercy, even after he had begged me for it. I could feel the hatred, the evil, all this sin just flowing through my veins. Even the Chalice of Alignment noticed my unbelievable act of evil. From Erhan's corpse, I got the- it, I know I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, and I know I pronounce words wrong all the time, but, but I got the Binde Klinge or something, a melee weapon that releases homing light masses when critically striked, and it also had its own lore. I also got his cross, and this necklace was phenomenal. It summons a holy shield to orbit around me, and it reflects most projectiles, and it, it, it was so good. I used it for like the entire playthrough. Later on, I started thinking about the Brain of Cthulhu because I still felt unready for the Keeper, so I made a magic weapon called the Calcite Wand, and it drops stalactites from the cursor and deals more damage the higher they are dropped, and I went to go test my might. I ended up losing, but that's okay because I got just enough tissue samples to make a Deathbringer pickaxe and begin mining Hellstone. Now for whatever reason, I guess I forgot that I mined Hellstone because I never made anything with it, I just made more NPC housing and lost to the Keeper again. Afterwards, I went down to hell, got even more Hellstone, and made the Molten Fury. I wanted to continue using the weapons from this mod, but I was getting nowhere, so I used the Molten Fury to kill me, whatever. I then spent pretty much the entire day fighting the Goblin Army, and afterwards, I had my final battle with the Keeper. From the Keeper, I got a Sorrowful Essence. It says that having this in inventory may attract the Keeper's first creation underground. The Chalice of Alignment, which I'm just going to refer to as the Chalice from here on out, also said, Octavia's Protector is in search of you. A conflict will be inevitable. However, mayhaps this may bring a chance for a courteous ending. I got to thinking that the Keeper's real name is Octavia, and she has a Protector that I also need to kill. So I fought the Keeper again, but this time once you get to 50% health, her protector, Skulldigger, swooped in and tried to stop me. They were both really sad when they died, and I was actually kind of feeling bad, but it, it's okay because I got this sick ass weapon from Skulldigger called the Skulldigger Skulldigger. It's a melee weapon that spins around you and conjures arcane mirages to shoot at enemies. I deemed all the loot from the Keeper to be pretty ass, but the child suddenly had something to say about the wedding ring that I had, the item that I used to summon her, and it said, an undead, something tells me she isn't out of her misery just yet. So I'm guessing I'm still not done with this boss, even though I've defeated her twice now. I just decided to ignore it for now and go defeat the Brain of Cthulhu. Afterwards, I made the King Oak Staff, a summoner weapon that summons a nature pixie, and there's like a whole paragraph of lore for this weapon, so I'm just gonna let you guys read all that. Once the next day had arrived, I continued exploring to the left and ran into a jungle, and in said jungle, I ran into a pile of sleeping stones, and when broken, the next boss on my list was summoned. I got a whole bunch of shit from this boss, but the most mysterious item was the Eye of the Eagle Crest Golem, because it says that it contains a storm of energy and that I should keep it around. 
Anyways, I also got this sick-ass melee weapon called the Eagle Crest Javelin, and it strikes enemies with lightning when hit. It was it was really cool to see. Once I was done there, I began exploring more to the right, and directly under the snow biome was some sort of crazy-looking lab that I couldn't access yet, but I will be back. Later that night, I decided it would be fun to open up a strange portal, and I fought the ugliest boss I have ever seen. As soon as I had defeated the Seed of Infection, another strange portal opened up and out came an android named Adam. He said that he has come here to hide from someone named Geras, who, whoever that is. After letting him know he can stay here, because I guess I'm just running a hotel for free now, I opened the treasure bag from the Seed of Infection and got a handful of Xenomite shards, which I used to make the Contagion Spreader, a magic weapon that casts a contagious shard that sticks into enemies. From the boss, I also got a new summoner weapon called the Diseased Meeple, and it summons something called a Sistling that just kind of suckles on enemies until they die. Afterwards, I decided to go mining for more Obsidian and Hellstone, but while I was doing so, I got ambushed by my good old friend, Skulldigger. As nice as it was to see him, I murdered him again, but this time I thought it'd be really, really funny if I used his own weapon to do so. So I killed the Skull Digger with the Skull Digger's Skull Digger. Once he was dead, he dropped a teddy bear that told me to let the Keeper's Spirit rest. So I got to thinking, and I thought, what if I summoned the Keeper again, but this time I gave her the teddy bear. I finished getting Hellstone, made Hellstone armor, and then summoned the Keeper for the final time.
after all that nonsense with being with being a, a a good guy, I wanted to see if any of the other bosses were like this. So I summoned Urhan again, but the only change is that you fight a spirit instead. I summoned the Seed of Infection again as well, but there was no change. I, I did use the extra Xeno my shards it gave me to make the Xeno Zeistin though. It's a melee weapon that spins really, really fast. I then spent the longest time trying to defeat the Skeletron. Like, I actually I actually have no clue why I couldn't defeat it. I, I tried for days and lost over and over again. Like, I had full Hellstone on everything and I just couldn't kill it. Now, I can't remember exactly why, but while I was waiting for Knight to arrive to fight the Skeletron again, I was running along a railroad right at the edge of hell when I came into contact with the Skull Digger. He basically said he misses Octavia, so I gave him the wedding ring that was used to summon her, and he seemed to move on just as Octavia did, so everything came to a happy ending. Eventually, I did beat the Skeletron, but I didn't find anything new in the dungeon, so I just thought it was a waste of time, but it wasn't, because since the Skeletron had been defeated, these little blue crystals started to grow in the icy caverns. I went to check it out, and it turns out that these crystals, plus some iron bars, make these pure iron bars, and these are used to make some pretty cool stuff. I gathered up a whole bunch of these crystals and used them to make a pure iron pickaxe, a pure iron battle axe, a pure iron sword, and a magic weapon called the pure iron staff, and it looks pretty cool, but it sucks. Later that night, I also made the Pure Iron Armor set. There's a whole bunch of stuff to read for it, like all the lore, so I'll just let you guys read all that. Okay, so I haven't mentioned it, but throughout the entire playthrough so far, I've been collecting eggs from chickens I've seen across the map so that I could do this. After doing what Colonel Sanders does every weekend, I went to go get a guide voodoo doll. I was down there for a while and I got absolutely nothing, so I decided to check to see what boss was next on my list, and it was this boss named Calavia. It said that this boss is supposed to appear at the underground portal. And then I remembered a little bit after defeating the Skeletron, I got a message saying that a new portal opened up, so I checked my map and lo and behold, there was indeed a new portal location. I dropped everything I was doing and bolted straight for this portal, but as soon as I got there, I was confronted by this boss. It spoke in a different language and then it absolutely crushed me. But I wasn't having any of that, so I made a pure iron crossbow, went back to the portal, and crushed it the same way it crushed me.
after the fight, she begged me for mercy, and honestly, I was I was gonna kill her like I did Urhan, but I waited just a second too long, and she ended up surviving. She talked about how she and her team jumped into the portal and got split up, and now she can't find her way back. But that is none of my concern. So just as I was about to leave, she said something that caught my eye. She said that if I get her some stuff, she'll give me some stuff, and I was sold. I got out the stuff she needed right away, but I wanted my stuff first, so I placed on the forge she requested, and she told me she could make two things. The Blade of the Mountains and the Icefall, but in order to make those things, she would need the Zwiehander and the Mistfall. Now from all the ruins I searched in the past and decided not to include them in this video because there were like five of them, I had both parts to craft the Zwiehander, but I did not know how to make it, so I took it to this NPC that showed up a while ago named Happens. He was considered a Fallen, which just meant that he was undead. But he was able to fix the sword up no problem. I took it and the Mistfall down to Calavia and she upgraded them for me. Once her end of the bargain was held, I, I held on my end of the bargain and gave her six pure iron bars and a pure iron helmet that she requested. And she jumped back into the portal, never to be seen again. Like, like actually never to be seen again. She did not show up. Afterwards, I finally decided to loot the ruins around the portal and got an item called the Dead Ringer. It's used to communicate with spirits, so I used it on the body next to the portal. And this happened. I was given an ability called Spirit Walk, and it was used to enter the spirit realm and communicate with other spirits. I talked to the spirit that came out of the corpse, and he was pretty much like, oh, the spirit realm is full of spirits, and if you're nice to them, you can request a crux from them and imbue it into an empty crux card to call on them in battle. I used this ability and ended up finding Skull Digger again. He has become the highlight of this mod, so I always enjoy talking to him, but he wasn't doing as good as I was. When I gave him the winning ring and he moved on to the afterlife or whatever, he was hoping to join Octavia in the spirit realm, but he couldn't find her anywhere, and the worst part is, is that this is the end of the story. They both become freed from their sorrows, and the Skull Digger spends the eternity searching for Octavia. Like, like that was it. That That's the end of it. Regardless of how depressed he was, I requested for his crux and he said, for all the kindness you have brought, I will accept. May I serve you well. So fuck Octavia. Who needs Octavia? You can serve me now. Oh, also there was this really weird portal thing right behind Skull Digger, so I obviously entered it, and it just teleported me to a random location. There was really no point in doing it. After all that spirit nonsense, I got a guide voodoo doll and defeated the Wall of Flesh. Now usually at this point in the playthrough, I would speed run through all the hard mode ores, but I found out that I can nuke part of my world to make a biome of radiation. So I did that instead. Everything in the biome was absurdly difficult to kill, but they dropped Toxic Bile, which I used to make the Digestive Vat, a magic weapon that fires an arc of digestive fluid at the enemy, and this made it significantly easier to get through all the hard mode ores. Afterwards, I used the rest of my Toxic Bile to make the Infected Tentacle, a summoner whip that summons friendly hive cysts on hit, but it was quickly replaced by the Blood Stained Pike, a melee weapon that allows me to skewer enemies, and if either an enemy is skewered for 10 seconds, or 5 enemies are skewered at the same time, it will turn into a summon weapon and just kill everything in sight. I went to the radioactive biome to test this out and it was, it was amazing. Once I was done messing around, I got to work getting forbidden fragments to make the forbidden armor set because I still wanted to be a mage, but even with the armor and the new weapons, I couldn't beat a single mechanical boss, though all of this changed when I got word of a certain weapon that drops from the most scary and malicious beast any Terraria mod has ever had to offer. Bob the blob. All jokes aside, this man had 50,000 health and took ages to defeat, but eventually I took him down and got the weapon, Dan. It's a ranged weapon that fires in a two round burst and continuing to fire this weapon causes the weapon to spin, creating a spiral of bullets. I spent the entire next day switching to a ranger so that I could destroy the twins when night came. After defeating the twins, I had so much time left over that I also defeated the Skeletron Prime. 
Once all the battling was over, I was able to make a few weapons. The first being a melee weapon called the Blind Justice Demon's Terror. It was it was it was kind of shit to be honest. And the second weapon being another melee weapon called the Wraith Slayer. That was also pretty shit. But there was this third weapon. It was a ranged weapon called the Flak Cannon. And this weapon shot a burst of grenades, and it was so overpowered that I was able to kill anything with literally no struggle whatsoever. Later on, I went to go talk to Adam the Android to see what else he sells now that all the mechanical bosses have been defeated, and it turns out that he sells something called an IO locator, and it's used to find the abandoned laboratory, so I bought one and followed it. After a little bit of searching, I found the lab, but I couldn't get inside because of a green slime that was blocking the door. I just assumed I would need a better pickaxe, so I went back home and made the pickaxe axe. Once I was back, I was able to mine the sludge and enter the abandoned laboratory. By the looks of it, this place had been abandoned for a long time. I ended up crawling through the vents to access a room where I did find somebody and I had to take out the janitor. After mopping the floor with him, he gave me a lab access panel that can be used to enter the alpha sector of the lab, so I opened it up and got to exploring. There were a bunch of chests filled with some pretty cool stuff, but none of it was better than the flak cannon, so... Eventually, I opened a chest and got a weapon called the Prototype Atom Rifle, and it, was, it wasn't better than the flak cannon, I was just sick of only ever using it, so I started using the Atom Rifle as well. After a bit of looking around, I entered this really slimy looking room, and all of a sudden a boss named the Irradiated Behemoth spawned right above me, and I'm not gonna even bother making a cool boss fight section like I did with the other guys here, because it was literally just a slow moving wall that rarely ever hit me. After defeating it, I got a handful of floppy disks to take to Adam the Android, and I got another lab access panel that's used to enter the Gamma sector of the lab. I found the janitor in one of the rooms down there, but all he did was complain about having to clean. After a bit more exploring, I got to a point where I couldn't access any more of the lab, so I went to the wasteland to get some more xenomite shards because inside of the lab, I was able to grab a xenium refinery, which converts xenomite shards into xenomite. Later on, I made a couple of energy packs so that I could actually use the prototype atom rifle, and I tested it out on the Eye of Cthulhu, and it, it was dead in 5 shots. It only took 5 shots to kill the Eye of Cthulhu. Afterwards, I made the Infected Thorn Shield, which was just a better version of the Shield of Cthulhu. I also made the Bio Launcher, a ranged weapon that charges up and releases a stream of radioactive gloop, and it was it was alright, I barely used it though. Eventually I did get around to reading those floppy disks that I got from the lab, and they pretty much just said that there were people in the lab doing research on Xenomite, and it was used to make some very bad things. Afterwards I spent a while gathering up a bunch of adamantite and Xenomite to make full Xenomite armor. Once I had the armor, I fixed up my NPC housing because it was just an absolute mess, and proceeded to summon the next boss. King Slayer the Third.
From King Slayer III, I got a handful of cyber plating that's used to make a, a whole bunch of stuff. I also got a Hypertech Blaster. It's a ranged weapon that replaces normal bullets with energy bolts, and honestly, it just isn't that good. I also got a Pocket Shield Generator. It summons a bubble shield that protects me from damage, and it, it was pretty good. I decided to fight King Slayer III again so that I could get more cyber plating and make full hard light armor. Afterwards, I went back to that lab looking thing I found in the snow biome way back when, because I had also gotten a key from the King Slayer III that, quote, unlocks hollow chests found in a crashed spaceship. I crawled on inside and got a shit ton of loot from these hollow chests, like capacitators and plating and carbon microfibers. Did I have any clue what these were? No, but did I have them? Yes, I did. Once I got to the end of the ship, I noticed Kingslayer chilling on the floor above me, just, just sitting in a chair, so I went up there to talk to him. He was being a crabby little asshole the entire time we talked, but eventually he said that he needs uranium to fix his ship. I didn't have any of that, so I said, screw you, and threw all the stuff I got from the ship in a chest. Some other things I got from his ship were data logs and plenty of weapons, but I didn't want to read through all those data logs and none of the weapons were good, so I went to the jungle to start building the Plantera Arena. Once I was done building a half-assed arena, like actually the worst arena I've ever made, I attempted the Plantera and because of the arena I obviously lost, but it was no worries because I went right back down there, fought it in the same exact arena again, but won this time. After the Plantera had been defeated, I went to the dungeon to get a whole bunch of ectoplasm for future crafting. With all the ectoplasm, I was able to make the ghastly recurve, but it sucked. It looked really cool, but it sucked. Since the ghastly recurve sucked and all I ever used was the flat cannon, I decided that maybe it was time for a switch of classes. So I made the spell song Core of the West and the Midnight Defiler of the Prince, both of them being melee weapons. Both of them were super cool to use and I got it in my head that I wanted to be some sort of like holy knight or whatever. So I dropped the ranger bullshit and began my journey of becoming a knight. And by journey, I mean I got the warrior emblem and called it a day. After my epic journey, I went to the jungle temple and defeated the golem. I then went and got a bunch of chlorophyte to make beetle armor. Once that was all done, I was just looking around the new NPC's shops to see if they had anything new to offer and noticed that the wayfarer, you know, the asshole that came from the portal, sold a new item called Ofo's Lost Notes. These notes detail the smithing of a very powerful sword. So I bought the notes, grabbed the Sword of Forgotten that's supposed to be combined with, and took them both to the Fallen to make the Ofo's Forgotten Greatsword. This melee weapon allows me to spin a blade around myself that sets ablaze and forms a firestorm around me. Needless to say, this sword was pretty fucking cool. I took the Sword of the Jungle Temple to test it out on the Golem, and though it was really good, it was way too close range for me, like way too close range, so I just didn't use it that much. Afterwards, I finally decided to go through all of the data logs I found on the Kingslayer ship, and to sum it all up, the Kingslayer is a human in a robot's body that left his planet to escape his world's reset. What he plans on doing is traveling among the stars for a million years and then returning to his home planet after I assume the reset is over with or civilization is back alive or something. He put himself inside of a robot body so that for the million years he wouldn't have to worry about trivial human matters such as like sleep or hunger. But after just a few short days, he started to feel hungry and feeling tired and it was driving him insane. And that's about it. A couple thousand years have passed since he started his voyage and he is still experiencing extreme fatigue and hunger. I actually kind of feel sorry for him. Anyways, I got super duper tired after reading through all those, so I went to bed. When I awoke feeling refreshed as ever, I decided it was time to fight the first Omega prototype.
the fight was unbelievably easy. It, it, it just took me forever. Like, I barely took any damage that entire fight. It took me forever because the stupid thing in front blocked all of my projectiles. After that super annoying fight, I used the materials to drop to make a tiny cleaver, a melee weapon that when swung, it causes the blade sibilance to detach to increase its range. I also got the broken blade, a piece of equipment that has a chance to summon a phantom cleaver above an enemy's head when hit with physical melee. Once I was done assessing the loot from the first Omega prototype, I waited until night to fight the second Omega prototype. That fight was significantly more annoying than the first one, bro. Like, uh, you could actually barely do any damage unless you destroyed the shield generators first. Using its scrap, I made the Oversized Screwdriver, a melee weapon that allows me to bounce against enemies with each bounce increasing its damage by 300%. Now that all this old mega nonsense was done, I went over to the dungeon to defeat the Lunatic Cultist, and the Oversized Screwdriver worked wonderfully. It worked wonders against him. Now that the Celestial Events had started, I went and took down the Solar Pillar. I then used those solar fragments to make both the Daybreak and the Solar Eruption. I continued to take down the Vortex and the Sardis Pillars, but before I continued, I went to the abandoned lab because I remember there being a weird goo everywhere that I wasn't able to mine, but I had a better pickaxe now. It turns out that all that goose shit was uranium, so I grabbed a whole bunch of it and headed straight for Kingslayer's ship. 
I barged right into his ship and practically threw the uranium at him. But after giving it to him, he also wants me to make him a wiring kit. What what a what a needy little asshole. I decided to help him just because it would it would help him get off my planet sooner. But that's when my symptoms started to kick in. I got a massive headache and started to feel extremely weak and extremely nauseous. My hair started just falling out in clumps and I my, my skin felt like it was on fire. Only when it was too late did I know what happened to me. I was dying from radiation. I, I didn't know what to do. I only held a pure uranium in my bare hands for just a couple of minutes and I had no clue what would lead to this and I, I don't want to die. I have so much to live for. How are all my subscribers going to live without my entertainment? What, what am I going to tell my family? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I cannot believe I'm dying. I have so much to live for. I have so much left to do and see. I, I was... After respawning and remembering that this is just a video game, I made the wiring kit and helped fix up King Slayer's ship. But even after doing that, he wanted me to get him more stuff. He wanted me to get him whole plating as well. As frustrated as I was with him, I, I didn't argue. I left, I gathered up all the materials, and made the whole plating to further fix his ship. Once that was done, he only had one thing left for me to do. Make an AFTL engine. And I totally would've, but it required plutonium, and seeing how things went after uranium, Let's just say I wasn't very eager to grab plutonium. Plutonium. Afterwards, I went home and got started on my asphalt path for the Moon Lord. I then took down the Nebula Pillar and defeated the Moon Lord with ease. As soon as the Moon Lord died, that weird being started talking to me again and let me know that the rest of the lab was open now. I went home to prepare for the lab and remember that orb thing that we got way way back from the moving pile of stones in the jungle? Yeah, well it is glowing now. Me being the reasonable guy I am, I picked it up and when, it, when I picked it up it said to place it down and encase it within the stones of its origins, which I assumed to be gathic stone, but I didn't know how to arrange the stone, so I took a quick look at the wiki and figured it out. I began arranging everything just as the wiki said to and it caused the stone to start glowing. Once all the stone was glowing, it suddenly turned into an ancient sigil used to reawaken an ancient power. After all of that madness, I went down to the lab to explore the new area, and with a new keycard from the Moon Lord, I was able to open the high security crates and get a shit ton of cool loot, including this super cool melee weapon called the Automated Hacksaw that switches between three different attack modes and some plutonium. After a bit of looking around, I got to this area in the radiated water with these weird red target looking things and they are deadly. Like, like I touched one for one second and I was just instantly dead. I went back and actually made it to the other side where there was this tiny room that looked like it could be an arena of sorts and I was right. Once I entered this room, a boss named Blisterface spawned and it was some sort of radioactive fish but it wasn't that big of a deal. With that fish being skewered, I got a new special key card that I used to open a special crate and inside was a nano pickaxe that could mine all of the black hardened sludge that was blocking every single path. I used the pickaxe to open up all of the old paths and in doing so I got the Xenium Refinery. After opening up all the paths I got to this bigger arena room and when I entered it a boss named Protector Volt spawned. He was hard at first, but I got his attacks down and defeated him pretty easily. I then went home right away and used the Xenium Refinery that I had just got to make the Xenium Lance, a melee weapon that deals over 1000 damage, but it's unfortunately super close range. 
I went back to the arena where I was able to talk to Protector Volt, and he had so much shit to say, like, about this fucking war or whatever that was going on. And I, ju I just wasn't having it. The only thing that I actually learned from that long-ass discussion was that Giros, the person that was mentioned way earlier, was bad news. Afterwards, I went into another arena below the one I was just in and fought the Mace Project. It was a scary-ass war machine that took no time to defeat. The next and final room was huge, and it held this disgusting, tumor-looking boss named Patient Zero, and it was much, much, much harder than the last few bosses. Once I was back home, I used the plutonium to complete the AFTL engine and finished helping out our good friend Kingslayer III. With all of this being done and over with, I felt like I was finally ready to take on the final Omega prototype. But I obviously wasn't because bro wiped the floor with me. It was it was embarrassing. It took a while, but eventually I was able to defeat it. It was a close fight, and I'm pretty sure I only beat it because it was raining and like water isn't good for machines, you know, but whatever. I, I, used it, I used its parts to make the Sun and Palm, a melee weapon that quite literally allows you to hold the sun, but if I hold on for too, too long, it hurts me. I used that weapon to fight Patient Zero, but just like the last boss, it took a couple of tries before I learned all of its attacks and was able to defeat it.
I'd finally reached the end of the lab, but after the lab there was nothing to do, like like actually nothing left to do besides continue defeating bosses. So I made this melee weapon called the Infectious Gauntlet and used the Ancient Sigil to reawaken an ancient power. That boss or bosses were so easy to defeat, I was actually disappointed with how, how like well it went. From them, I got the, and I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, so so just bear with me, the Ukon Vasara, a melee weapon that could switch between three different modes, hammer, axe, and sword. And honestly, this weapon was so cool to me for some reason, I actually have no clue why. Like, I think it's my favorite weapon in any mod I've ever played. Afterwards, I decided it was about time to end this playthrough, so I farmed some Sar Serpents for their galaxy stars, so that I can make the Galaxy Stone and summon the final boss, the Angel of Cosmos.
Thank you all so much for watching this video, and sorry that this was like a week late. With school starting, things have been very, very busy, but to make up for that, I would like to announce something big that I've been thinking about doing for quite some time now. I've made a second channel. This second channel, link in the description, is going to be a less edited playthrough channel of mainly scary games, but I will touch base with other games. I've always wanted to start my own playthrough channel, like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye, so I hope you all will continue to watch and support me on both channels from now on. Oh, and the first video for the second channel will be out on September 12th at 6pm CST. Yeah, that's about it. See ya.